Welcome to another episode of Riding the Wall Podcast with your undisputed tag team champions of the podcast world. Uh, Chad. Man. I'm Justin. And we're back again. i uh, got some stuff to talk about this week, but first, did you have a good week? Not bad. Yeah? Kind of a slow week. A lot of rain. Well, yeah. A lot of catching up on my Netflix shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. But... Oh, those are good weeks. You know? They can be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm starting to get to the age. I'm finding out that I'm getting to the age now where I'm ready for life to slow down, you know? Because I've just been running and running for years since I was probably 18. Well, since before that. Right. But, uh, you know, I've always kept up with the fast-paced world, and now I'm just ready to not Sit keep back up and with watch it. it go by a little bit. Yep. Just slow roll life with a cold drink in my hand and a, a comfy chair. Yeah. And just watch it go, but uh, just like, just like we mentioned last week, some of them drivers, man, when they go to them super speedways, they just no matter where they qualify, they just fall out of the pack and let all the young guns run up front, and yep. they just back there and wait for that big one to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. <clears throat> yep, yep, we are the veterans in the world now, yep. getting there. But uh, so, what about your week? Well. My week was, I've been working, but uh, work, 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 seems like that's all I ever do, but I had a day off Tuesday, and uh, life got a little crazy for one day, but, uh, it keeps you know. It keeps it in check, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> Let it you kept... remember what's out there. <laughs> <laughs> it got crazy from, uh, you know, had a, got fussy with somebody on the interstate, um, you know, we went to Evansville, spend the day in Evansville, and uh, got crazy on the interstate. I'm not going to discuss that too much. Mom might be listening, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I found that asshole that was on the interstate, and I just wanted to prove my point that I'm a bigger asshole on the interstate. Sometimes, I think we both proved our point. Yeah. Sometimes you got to let people know that they're not the only asshole out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm quick to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get over there, we see a couple guys stopped on the side of the interstate just taking a pee right there you know it's obvious what they're doing you obviously you couldn't see nothing but you know yeah. it's a good thing i had the wife with me i don't know what she was thinking but uh no they that's just weird you don't see that all the time and then we get uh we get over to evansville and then can't find nothing to eat place a town big town full of you know restaurants and stuff and everywhere we wanted to go i like to go to gaddy's i like to go to mr gaddy's for pizza um, and they have a really good Gaddy's over there. It's a big Gaddy land, you know. You got games. I like to play the games. Yeah. You know, I like to I like to to run the high score up on some of these kids. You know, I'm that kind of person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Might as well be me. Couldn't couldn't get nothing to eat there. Gaddy's. It was closed. Even though I could see people in there mopping the floor and and doing stuff. It like probably didn't have em- enough employees or something like that. Like we do run into since the pandemic. You know. Yeah. It, it could have been. Um, you know, crazy. I've seen, seen a few people in there, but so we didn't get no Gaddies. Cool. And then we found a place over there that's just in Evansville called Fat Boys Pizza. And I'm not giving them a shout out here, but that's the name of the place because we go over there and it was like a five star review that we were looking up, you know. So I was like, let's try that, you know. I'm, I kind of consider myself a pizza connoisseur. Right. I love so, some pizza. Yeah. So I was like, let's go to Fat Boys and uh, let's so, see if their deal's real. Yeah. So we yeah. make it halfway across town. And I don't know if you've ever been to Evansville. But some parts of Evansville is, looks pretty nice, and some parts of Evansville don't does not look pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we went from uh, Gaddy's, which seems to be in like a, a, a kind of a shopping um, part of town, a lot of stores and stuff like that, to where this Fat Boys is, which was there was nothing, there was nothing over there. And we get we make it all the way over there, and we find out that it's carry out only. So. Yeah, that's me off. It did. It made me mad. I don't like to eat in the truck. No, I, you know, never. And Lisa knows that. She's like, no, no, you know, you know, Justin's not going to want to eat in the truck. You know, mm-hmm. I don't. I like to sit down and enjoy my food and hit the road. Yeah, and that's Here. what I was looking for. Right. You know, something to sit down, have some food, and get back going. But no. So then we we decided, and this is a couple hours later. Did we you decided leave them to a try. bad review. Not yet. You said it, it had a bunch of good ones. Might need a bad one to it put does, them in check. It might. It might knock that five star down to maybe a four point eight. Yeah, that'll show them. Yeah. 
So then we thought, well, maybe let's go back to Gaddy's. Maybe somebody just reserved it. You know, we make it all the way back over there. No, it's still closed. Uh, <laughs> Is that person still mopping? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't go to the door a second time. <laughs> but, yeah, that pissed me off. But we ended up reading at Red Robin, which was right up the just... You know, you could throw a rock from Gaddy's and hit Red Robin, so that's where we ate. And it just wasn't as good as I remembered it to be. Overpriced, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. overpriced. But, uh, but, yeah. Besides work, that was my day off, you know, chasing food. Yeah. So. Yeah. little entertainment. Break up the monotony. Yeah. Know. Yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah. It was kind of fun. So. But. So, uh, you and I, neither one got to watch this race. No. You know, it got postponed. Uh, mm-hmm. New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, New Hampshire from Sunday to Monday. Right from Sunday to Monday. Uh, started at twelve noon on Monday with all the rain they got out there Sunday. Uh, you and I neither one got to watch it, but we did catch the highlights. Yeah. Um, what was your thoughts on the highlights? I know there's some there's been some kickback from NASCAR down to the drivers and the crews about restarts and stuff like that. But what was your thoughts about? The race in general. Oh my gosh, Truex just straight up kicked their ass. Yeah, it was a one man show. It was. It reminded me a lot of Larson at Wilkesboro. Mm -hmm. Um, The way he just dominated the field. I mean, he he won with it. He was had a three second lead when he crossed the line. That's crazy. It's insane. I mean, and you know the highlights that I watched. Three seconds um, ain't a lot, but in NASCAR, three seconds is a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 a big lead. Yeah, it's a big lead. Um. You know, I was watching watching the highlights, and I've seen a few of the restarts, and I thought, I don't know what happened on the restarts. I don't know if Truex just took off soon. I don't know if the outs or the the um, the other person on the front row, whoever that was at the time, just kind of took off well, slow. Well, it's hard. It's hard to catch that stuff because when you, I mean, you got people. You're lined up. We all, and any NASCAR fan, anybody that listens to this probably knows how they line up on a restart. But when you got somebody pushing you, no mm-hmm. matter if it's from eight cars back, mm-hmm. if somebody's back there pushing, you have to go. Yeah, or you you're got no You're going to get spun. Yeah. You know, you're going to get dumped. Mm-hmm. And you can't have that. Right. So, I mean, it to me, it looked like everybody was just out of sync that day. Yeah. And I don't know Except if it's Except for Martin Truex. <laughs> <laughs> Right, but I mean, I don't know if it's because it was a Monday, you know, and what was going on. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it why it was happening, but it seemed like the whole field was just out of sync. Yeah, yeah, they they did seem kind of out of sync. Um, but watching them highlights, it was like Truex just ran away with it. I mean, he ran a perfect race. He won all stages. He had, like you said, a three second lead when when the race was over. We're at the checker flag. He had a three-second lead. Um, he just wiped the floor with everybody. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot, really, other than his dominance to really talk about. I mean, I thought Christopher Bell was going to have a pretty good race. Um, I seen he got he had some issues and got up into the wall. I don't know exactly what happened to him. Um, same thing with Kyle Busch. I was expecting Busch not necessarily to be up there in the front, but I figured he would top have a 10. good race. Yeah, top ten. You know, it's Kyle Busch. Yeah. Um, Dead last. He didn't have a good race. No, he didn't. So. But, um, and Almirola, you know. He a, usually does good there. Yeah. Um, and he was he was leading for a minute. Well, he was you leading know. when his tire came off, which I've heard a lot of people um, since that race wondered about, you know, the loose wheel policy and you know his wheel came off but it didn't actually come off the car and i think what a lot of people don't understand is there's a difference between a loose wheel and a broken wheel yeah you know um you know a a wheel that's just getting away from you on pit road well that takes it from a man problem to a machining problem yes you know what i'm saying there's there's things that they that nobody on on that team is going to be able to help if if your car breaks you nobody on that team could help that right if you got it put the lug on tight or at all or well mm-hmm. that's a man problem yeah yeah i think his i think he had and i don't know of course i wasn't there i didn't i didn't look into it after the thing but i i think looking back on it, i watched it a couple of times 
um, you could see the lug fly off of the car right before as he was getting squirrely so I don't know maybe they didn't get it tight maybe it just broke you know yeah. and I I'm glad it didn't come off the car because he had made it again I was watching highlights so I don't know how many laps he made on that on that loose tire but he uh, he made it some some trips around the track so I'm glad it didn't come off the car so nobody got penalized for right. that you know because I'm like you I think it was a mechanical issue I don't think it was a personal a, a person error human error so I'm glad they didn't get um, no penalties this week no penalties this week no drama this week yeah, so that's good that's what I thought about the race I mean there was a few surprises the Amarola and the Kyle Busch and how much Truex dominated that race yeah yeah Toyota was strong what did you think about it? What was your thoughts on that race? I'm right there with you. Yeah. Exa- I would have said the exact same thing. Um, it was uh, just by the highlights, you know, good race, you know. Interested to see what comes out of this restart saga. Yeah, with the restarts, I was looking at um, <clears throat> NASCAR.com a few few days ago and they were they were discussing the uh, restart issue and i guess nascar is going to sit down with all the teams or drivers or whatever i don't know but uh, and give some warnings about these restarts which raises some questions you know um first off what is i don't know how to say this what is the problems on restarts is it the leaders are they taking off too soon? Are they taking off too late? I mean, they've got a big window of track, and it's very clear that if you are starting the race, if you're the one that's on that pole position, whether it be on the inside or outside, you're the one that starts it. Yeah. When you're nobody can fire until you fire. Once you go, everybody goes. So well, and, whoever whoever the pole sitter is. Whoever's yes. leading the race, like if 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 you and I are on the front row and you were leading when we went under caution, yeah, you get to choose inside or outside, right? And I have to wait on you mm-hmm. to go, yes, even if I'm right next to you, yes, yeah, you know, so you go as soon as you hear my car fire, as soon as you hear me in the throttle, that's when you're in the throttle, right? So, and but that's I, easy to tell, but I, right, it is, but on the same note. It's easy to tell from TV. Right. You know, I've never been in that car. Mm-hmm. I do know, just from watching these races over the years, it's usually the crew chief or the spotter that's in the ear of the driver saying, go, 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 go. Right. You know, they're not, you know, you got so many cars around you. We know how loud it is sitting, riding the wall mm-hmm. when we go to these races. Mm-hmm. And... To be in that car with the helmet on, your earpieces in, and you're in a line of 38 cars somewhere. Yeah. You might be first, second, you might be 15th, 16th, you might be 37th or 38th. Mm-hmm. That sound down there might be different than what we hear on TV. It is. Um, now, I don't know this from, obviously, from the, the Winston Monster Cup. Cup. Right. Or Monster Energy Cup, whatever it's called these days, Monster, the Cup mm-hmm. Series, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, I don't know from that perspective, obviously. But being on the track, being on a track, even though I was very low... Lo- in local, dirt racer. Local track racer, yeah. yes. You can still hear. I mean, you would be surprised at how much you can hear a car behind you or... When that car, there's a car coming up on your left rear, you know, you can hear it pretty well. Um, even though, even though your car is just, it's deafening, it's so loud, it's deafening, and you've got, for me, I had a race receiver in my ear, so, you know, I could hear the tower talking, even though I couldn't communicate with them, they could, I could still hear them, barely. Right. I could still definitely hear this car coming up on my inside or my outside um, from behind me. So, and you can you can hear those cars around you pretty well on a restart. Um, so there's that. But at, 
but we're talking we were talking about the front row and when one car takes off the other car has to really be watching that other car listening to that other car and listening to like you said the crew chief and spotter saying go 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 but what about if you're in the fourth row or fifth row or sixth row you know you're somewhere back in the jungle and chaos that 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 is because you can't go until the car in front of you goes or you're going to run over him you got to hope that the guy behind you don't go too early or he's going to run over you which could cause you to go into the grass run over the guy in front of you whatever you know so you're putting your faith in a lot of other people if you're back there in the jungle four or five rows back right. and i think that's where a lot of these issues are coming from it's not necessarily the front row now on occasion you do see that leader that race leader he'll take off and he'll get a good jump and they got to call it back they'll do it again right but or, you, or you see that other guy try to stay with him and he ends up getting a jump but you also got to throw in allies and i'm doing air quotes here but enemies you mm -hmm. know and, and by enemies i don't mean somebody that that driver don't like i mean a manufacturer difference yes you know if you got martin truex on the inside of row one danny hamlin on the inside of row two and you've got ryan blaney on the row one outside and chase elliott row two outside that chevy's not going to push that forward like denny hamlin's going to push martin truex right you know because of the teammate factor yes so you got to throw that into every equation on every restart in, in every race yeah so you know you might it might look like one row's bumping and pushing more harder than the other one but it also might look like spots three four and five are pushing harder than spots 11 12 and 13 on the opposite side because yeah. of the teammate factor right and and i think it's just going to be interesting to see what comes of these restarts and the warnings that nascar is given because um you know it's not just a front row issue it's like i said it's a, it's, field issue. It's a whole field yes and you know sometimes you got these guys playing games that and i've been i've done this before myself you know you go on a restart and you just latch onto the back bumper of the guy in front of you and you go ahead and you start pushing him a little bit before you get to that restart right. zone and that's you know? that's the thing here is that all 38 of these drivers are professionals they're mm -hmm. at the top level of their sport mm -hmm. they're not out there to lose they're not out there to cheat no they're out there to put on the best show they can mm -hmm. with the equipment they have and be successful at their job and their sport. Yeah. And that's why I don't think it's nothing malicious. No, it's you nothing. Know, it's just, I don't know how you're going to get them all on the same page, but every race and every caution is going to be different. Yes. So how do you set guidelines for that? And, and another big issue that I see is that with this new car, it's so hard to pass under green flag during the race it's hard to pass i mean some of these tracks you see these guys setting setting another guy up and it takes them two or three laps to make a pass if they can even make it at all so these guys got to get a lot of their positions on pit road or restarts so they get antsy yeah you know as soon as this as soon as they enter that restart zone they're ready to go because they need to pass a few cars you know so that I think that's awesome. But your approach, uh, your approach is going to be different whether you're in the front of the pack, middle of the pack, and the back of the pack. Your approach is going to be different because of the size of that restart zone. Right. You know, so. And at the same time. Let them do their job, boys. Yeah. I mean, a restart, we, <laughs> we've known for how long has this sport been around? NASCAR, 75 years. Yeah. We know restarts are crazy. They've always been crazy. You're not going to get everybody on the same page for a restart. I mean, some people have even said NASCAR creates restarts to make it crazy. I've heard that before. <laughs> so, I mean. They don't mind the chaos. Right. And and they shouldn't, you know. I mean, that, that they're, they're out there to win. Yeah. You know, let them, let them go. Yeah. And, and they've been, NASCAR has been very, very vocal with, you know, the front row or the front guy leading the race starts anywhere within that restart zone. And like I said earlier, it's, it's a big. It's a big restart zone. You know, you go to a local track, like I have to take me at Brownstown because 
I actually did that. But they would have a cone set up there on turn four. And when that front row, when that leader hit the cone, that's when they fired. You didn't have a zone to start in. You, you had, had one spot. Yeah. This is where you start. If you if you fire after that cone, you're going to get run over, and that's on you. If you fire before the cone, we're you going fire to before that cone, we're going to do it again. You know, and if you do it twice, you're going to the back. We're going to give somebody. So you had to be on it right there at that spot. Yeah. NASCAR has a big. And I don't know how big this restart is. It varies by track, but it's a big window of time to start this race. But but that also adds excitement. It does. You know, because as soon as Truex pulls into this restart zone, Mm -hmm. he could hammer it and go. Mm -hmm. Or he could wait to the very last second. Or he could wait till he's gearing pull off that line. And he has that right because he's the leader. They gave him that right. Exactly. And he knows that. Everybody out there knows that. So if he's going to start... As soon as his front tires hit that restart zone, he can do that. Yep. And nobody knows when he's going to go except for him. So if he hits, the, if he fires, as soon as he gets in there, it's going to look like he jumped, right? If he waits until he gets to the end of that restart zone, and I don't know technically by the rules, but um, if you have to. Um, if you have to start, you know, does your front tire still have to be in that restart zone to start? Or can you wait till you're, it's just your back tires? Because technically you're still in that restart zone. Right. I don't know what that part of the rule is, but. I don't know if your whole car has to be in the zone or not. Or or front bumper. Right. I don't know. But yeah. let's say, let's say he can be. Let's say he's almost out of that restart zone, but half of his car is still in there. And then he fires. He may have that right too, you yeah. know, and then the rest of the field is going to be just ready to run over each other, and, and I think that's where we're getting that issue at. That's you know, if I if I'm if I'm leading at the caution, and it's up to me to restart, and I'm low on fuel, I'm going to take that extra 50, 75 yards mm-hmm. of caution speed over hammering down. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, yeah. there's a lot of factors that go into this, but. It'll be interesting to see what NASCAR comes up with and how their how their approach with the drivers and teams will be. Yes, and how these drivers are going to handle these warnings because <clears throat> I don't think this is something you can just say, "Hey, you got to clean that up, boys," and expect it to get cleaned up. Right. You know, that's it's just not going to happen that way. There's too many variables. Yes, and I just it, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So uh, this week. We go to the Tricky Triangle, mm-hmm. Pocono. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that? Well, Pocono is just one of them tracks, and I've said it a few times on this show, that I've never gotten excited about a Pocono race. I think it's, I don't think it's the layout of the track. I think the layout's very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a triangle. Three it's three turns, turns and they're yeah. all different. It's kind of like a road course, but you're only turning left. There is no right-hand turns. I like I like Pocono myself, mm-hmm. but uh, I can't wait to see it. Honestly, I just it's a it's a Chevy track. We all know that, so oh, I'm yeah. not excited about that. Yeah. You know, oh, well, but that's... <laughs> it it is what it is. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who comes out with it. It's made for some good races in the past. Oh, yeah. You know, just last year we had, you know, uh, Hamlin won, Kyle Busch got second, Chase Elliott got third, and then four hours after the race is over, we find out Chase Elliott's the winner. <laughs> let's, yeah, let's because of a me piece of tape. <laughs> <laughs> because of a piece of tape, I would be so pissed. Yeah, I was. You know, so. <laughs> um, I think it'll be an interesting race. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that can come out of it. You know, I I would not be surprised if we have another first. A first-time winner for this year, just to add to. Who add do you think it's going to be? If there's a first-time winner, who, who do you think is going to take it? Um, I think if we have a first-time winner, it's going to be a Toyota. Well, hold on, no. I take that back. Because the person I was thinking of has won a race. I think if it's a first-time winner. It would be one of these two people, and and I mean it in this order, Chase Elliott or Daniel Suarez. It could be if I, it's a first time winner. Yeah, that, I've been thinking of Suarez I think a lot. I think that's the top two that could do this 
pull this off that hasn't won a race yet this season? Well, I have an issue with the Chase Elliott part of that, and we're going to get to that here in just a minute because I've got that wrote down to talk about. But <clears throat> Suarez, Suarez is very possible because, like I said, this is kind of like a road course, but it's not a road course, and that's what he's best at. You know, he's got his well, one, one he, win. Well, if he can remember course. which gear to put it in. Right, if he can <laughs> <laughs> take that down Chef Daniel out of there. Um, he could very well win this race. Um, but... With this new car, there's there's so many people that could could do it. It's just it's tough to it's tough to find that, you know. Um, Justin Haley wouldn't surprise me. No, Justin Haley wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, I pull for Haley quite a bit. You yeah. know, he's just one of them lower guys I'd that don't get a whole lot of recognition. I mean, and I, I think he's. I, I I can predict this already. I oh. pull for Jason, Justin Haley. Mm-hmm already but i can promise you i'll pull more for him next year yeah <laughs> yeah why, why is that <laughs> <laughs> well it was announced today that uh justin haley signed with rick Ware racing so he'll be losing the bow tie and going to the blue oval well jo- now joining rfk <clears throat> racing you know uh rick Ware racing and rfk racing are uh teammates now See, I just I don't understand why he would do that, and I don't I don't know. Maybe there's something going on at Colleague that maybe he sees, maybe he feels like he's going to get pushed out. Maybe he feels like maybe he sees Ford starting to do something about next year, and maybe he wants to be a part of that. Um, yeah, I think it's more of I just he's joining something bigger with Rick Ware Racing. Yeah, that's teammates with rfk racing yeah but i mean how easy would it be for him to slide into is, how easy would it be for him to slide into that number six when this is done when brad retires and that ain't long we know that well, he's I mean, got a, he's got a couple years on him but <laughs> i mean how, how great of a seat would that be yeah that would be a pretty good seat um I think, but I also think he knows that Ford's here is next year. No, that's not happening. I don't think that's. Gonna... <laughs> oh yeah, it's coming. It's coming. That's something you just don't hear too many people yeah. say. Ford's oh, yeah. year is next year. It was last year. <laughs> well, I mean, they they had a good run with one guy, but um, I just I don't. And this is the fan side of me coming out. Is I just I've never thought anyone would look at Rick Ware Racing as a destination seat you know or a or a good seat to get in really i mean i wouldn't see colleg being a destination seat either no but if i had to put colleg and rick ware on the uh on the scales i would have to say colleg is a better seat yeah uh, well, not, just, me. not me no just because of the rfk alliance just because of that now, if there was no RFK alliance, I'd agree with you. Well, colleagues shares a lot of their stuff with, with Hendrick. You know, I mean, remember the whole Louvergate? Yeah, but that doesn't. I mean that, that doesn't impress me anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't, <laughs> they don't. They don't sell me on it. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm a. I'm, well, a big you're fan, I'm a it, big fan of Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon. I mean, they're 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 them guys are. With Jeff no, I'm just saying as as I'm, I'm not talking about as racers. I'm talking about <laughs> as what they time. do for the sport. Right. Them them guys have done a lot for the sport, and well, I they appreciate know what they're that. Doing, yeah. yeah. But they know what they're doing. That's why they got Chevys. But this is this this conversation is just gonna is just gonna dead stop because I'm a Ford guy here, a Chevy guy. Because right. I'm but, gonna sit here and say RFK Racing, I'm gonna say Penske, I'm gonna say Stuart Haas. But here, look at this though. It, it, let's take your your way of looking at it as far as Justin Haley going to Rick Ware, and maybe he's looking at an RFK seat in the future by going that route. He's already he's. He's already in with Colleg, and he has been for a few years, right? And Colleg shares, you know, a, a war secrets or a garage <laughs> or however you want to put it with 
Rick Hendrick. Wouldn't staying with Colleg for a Hendrick seat to open up be a better, maybe long term? Maybe from the outside looking in, but maybe he's not happy with the alliance. Maybe he sees these Hendrick guys different than what we do because we don't know them. We don't work with them. You know, maybe these Hendrick guys are like, hey, go back to college, bud. Yeah. And you know, we don't know. The only downside to my argument is that all the Hendrick guys are young. Right. You know, I mean, I think, which one's the oldest? Is it Larson or Elliot? Probably, probably Elliot. And he's not old at all. So, no. I mean, all four of them may have a seat for a long time. So Right. So and, you may be right. Yeah, I mean, maybe. You're, you look at the RFK Alliance and the Penske Alliance. I mean, well, I'm not saying Penske Alliance, but the Ford Alliance there. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot more seats come open in Penske and Seward Haas sooner than what's coming open in Chevrolet. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. I'm that guy that's like, put me in a Woods Brothers car, brother. You know what I mean? Because I love that car. I yeah. mean, they got Harrison Burton in it, who's a younger driver. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Ryan Blaney drove that car. I mean, that car's got so much history. And it, it's Wood Brothers has always been a one-car team. Mm-hmm. But I love that number 21. I do. I believe it's the oldest oldest team in NASCAR. It is. It? it is. But, you know, it's just a it's just a one-car show for the Wood Brothers. But I, I, if somebody said, hey, you want to you wanna join Wood Brothers and be in this car? Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you got a car you, for me to drive? Okay, I'll be there. What do you say when somebody asks if you want to drive the Wood Brothers car? Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I just love that car. But, you know, like going back to it, I think it's more of a, where, there's gonna, where are the more successful seats going to be available in the near future? It and you've got, you've got Brad Kozlowski that's, knocking on retirement's door you've got joe Logano, who's got probably a few more years than brad and you've got you know we already know harvick's going out and josh berry's taking his seat but you got Almarola going out too yeah, sometime at some point yeah yeah so i think it's a i think it's a better fit i'm happy for him uh if it, he's happy i'm happy for him right you know? maybe you know i don't know if he got a bump of pay that's all undisclosed information but who knows you know and and i think he's he seems like a pretty level-headed kid yeah i think he probably pulled in his his tribe his group around him and said here's what i've been offered what do you guys think and he made the best decision possible yeah well and this was all just announced today so maybe we'll find out more as far as you know, his decision. I mean, he's got a bright future. That. Yeah, yeah, it don't matter where he's at. I mean, yeah. the kid just keeps, just keep trucking away, bub. You're going to do fine. You know, he's he's young. He's got talent. He's already got a NASCAR win. He almost won at Chicago. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's he was impressive. out driving them guys, yeah. them veterans, which, like I said, I, I, I've been pulling for Justin Haley ever since I've, I knew about the kid. You know, just, I mean, I'd like to see him do good and just then watch that Chicago race. Just on the guy's first name alone, you know, he's going to be fucking badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll see, you know, we'll hear more about that Justin Haley move here in the next few days, I'm sure. Um, some things will start coming out as far as why. Hopefully he made the right decision for him. You know, I, I wish him luck. Um, I don't understand it, but I wish him luck. I so, understand it, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think if I heard right, <clears throat> this is, I think he's made one start in something other than a Chevy. All of his other starts in the in. In NASCAR. In, yeah, in NASCAR, Xfinity, or truck. However many races he's ran. It was everything's been in Chevy, so this will be it'll be new to him, but um, we'll see how it goes. But I've got got a few other things that uh, we've heard about this week. We have a guy that I've never heard of. I'm sure not too many people have heard of him. His name is Brody Kostecki, and he is one of the Australian guys, kind of like uh, Shane Van Gisenberg. Did I say that right? Yeah, SVG. Was SVG, yeah, we're yeah. just going to say SVG so we don't slaughter that name. Right. Um, 
but uh, he is going to make his NASCAR debut at the Indy Road Course here in just a couple weeks. And SBG is getting pulled back into the, that same race with Trackhouse. Yes. So yes. it's going to be a it's going to be an interesting race. It's going to be a very interesting race. I think it's going to be very interesting for our fantasy league as well. I think you're going to see I think a lot so too. <laughs> you're going to see a lot of people picking SBG. I think I think we will, but we I think there will also be some people taking this Brody guy mm-hmm. on the chances that somebody else gets their first win and first race in NASCAR. Yeah, and uh, this Brody guy is going to be racing for Richard Childress, so he's going to be a teammate of Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch. And SVG is coming back with Trackhouse, so he's going to be in that same ride that he was in in Chicago, which is going to make, like you said, things it's going to make very, it very interesting. interesting. Yeah. Now, which brings me to this question for you. Is SVG or this Kostecki guy going to win at Indy? I mean, we know they have the potential. We know they have the talent, or they wouldn't even be given this shot. But do you think that these Aussie guys can go two for two? No. I feel the same way. Why no. do you think that? I just, I, I just don't see it in the cards. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't upset me if they did, you know, because I want the, I want the best guy to win. I want the fastest car to win. <clears throat> the hardest worker out there on that track deserves to win. So, but on that same note. If I'm now, there's 38 cars out there on the on these races. So we got SVG and Brody coming in. So these other 36 drivers, give or take, unless there's another road course ringer coming in that we don't know about yet, like Button. You know, he he mm-hmm. was in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just gonna say these other 36 drivers that race NASCAR every week, they got a chip on their shoulder right now. And that's why I think it's going to be a NASCAR, a Monster Energy driver, a weekly Monster Energy driver that's going to take this checkered flag because of that chip on their shoulder. I agree with that. I think... um, I don't think they're going to go out there and terrorize them or wreck them or nothing crazy like that, but they're going to race them harder. Yeah. They're they're not going to let him win. Right. You know, Um, and I think at Chicago, what would that have looked like? Had it not been Justin Haley right behind him, maybe if, if that would have been one of the other three guys, so Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson. Chase Elliott, who don't have a win yet, who yeah, is a which phenomenal is really be driver. chewing on his back bumper, right, putting the pressure on him. You know, Larson can do the same thing, and you know Kyle Busch can. And do the same was thing, there so. any uh, backstage drama after SVG won that Chicago race? Was was there some shit talking in the garage areas that the that we don't know about? Was there some SVG standing over there going, oh, you think you're good, don't you, Chase? Yeah. You, you know, yeah. What <laughs> gotcha, you think boy. About, what do you think about that show, buddy? You yeah. know? So, I mean... <laughs> and there could have been. We know? would all be guilty of that. Oh, you know I know what, I would. Right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's uh, you, want me, you want me to sign that hat for you, yeah. Chase Elliott? You know, uh, it's, you know it's, it's one of them things, but all in good fun. Right. So, how's, it, how's this NDGP going to turn out with these? I think it's going to be a NASCAR regular just because Chicago was new. It was new to everybody. You know, all the NASCAR regulars were new to this street race, to this track, including SVG. So he was in the same boat as all the rest of them. And let's not forget that that race got cut 25 laps. Had it went the full 100, would SVG had won? Right. I don't know. I don't think so. Just because of pit strategies and how it played out, he kind of got lucky. Yeah. Him and Justin Haley both kind of got lucky yeah. on that that uh, decision to shorten a race, and right? But we can't we can't answer it either because we don't know, so. right? And that's just I think that had something to do with it. But would the results have been the same? I don't know. I can't answer that. They could have very well yeah. could have been. Um, but this Indy course, all the NASCAR regulars have been on it a few times. They know this track. SVG is just going to be learning it. So I think that kind of you know with Chicago, everybody was in the same boat. Whereas with Indy. You've got some guys that know the track. SVG does Watch not. Watch out for He's that learning. turn one. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Yes. Who was, who, was, who was that last year or two years ago that just, they're like, they're. Ross uh, Chastain just did it last year. No. Just blew onto the, well, I mean, like the emergency somebody, line. It, it was a bad wreck. It, it uh, Was it Chase Elliott or Kyle Larson, Kyle Larson that hit Ty Dillon? 
Larson. Larson. Yeah, because like his accelerator or something. Accelerator stuck. Yeah. And Yeah, that was I mean, it was a nasty that accident. Was horrible. But You could have something like that. Or I mean it's any restart going yeah. into turn one. How's S V G or this or Brody, how's he gonna handle those? You know, I don't know what an Australian supercars I don't know what they do on these restarts. I, are they polite with each other? Or are they just terrorizing I mean, each I'm other not... i don't know i haven't looked up i haven't looked them up to see how they race but i mean they're pretty aggressive i would have to assume because yeah. svg was i mean he was doing something there Chicago, see, obviously. to me on what i've seen on it it looks like their uh their takeoff speed is better than nascar's like it gets to a higher speed faster and their top you know obviously their top out speed is going to be what it is because they're they're on road courses all the time they're not on ovals so i I don't know i don't know i don't know how this is going to work out i mean i think uh, i would like to see svg and this brody guy get into the charlotte road course race as well because half of it is a road course and half of it is charlotte motor speedway track yeah on the oval right mm-hmm. so i think that would that would broaden their horizons mm-hmm. and make it more of an even field when it comes to skill but i don't think either one of them boys are going to pull off the ndgp I don't think they are. I think they're going to do very good. I don't think they're going to win. And no. and it wouldn't surprise me to see SVG in the top five. No. At at the checkered flag, it'll surprise me to see Brody in the top ten because I haven't seen nothing of him yet. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Brody saying he'll be in the twenty to twenty fifth spot. That that's where I think he'll. You just so? just not knowing, you know. But mm-hmm. that's that's my prediction. I think you'll see SVG in the top five, maybe top seven. But I think one of our NASCAR boys is going to pull it off. I think so. <clears throat> it's going to be it's going to be very interesting, just because there's going to be a lot of anticipation and a lot of expectations for them two guys to be up front, especially SVG. You know, yep. Brody don't have a whole lot of expectations. This is new to him. If he finishes 25th, yeah, you know, it is what it is. That's my day. But I think if SVG finishes 25th, people are going to be like, well, what the hell happened? Yeah, one trick uh, pony. I yeah. Mean. And and going along with this SVG thing, I think the, the rumors are out that he's going to be full-time NASCAR next year. I know a lot of people were wanting that and talking about I, that I've right after it, Chicago, and I thought that's crazy. I've heard it. To assume that this guy is going to just jump to NASCAR after winning one race. Yes, even though it was his only race, it was, you know, the the circumstances it that it was. You but know. on the same note, I mean, it was out of his norm too, being on a right hand, normally right hand driver to a left hand driver, shifting with his left hand, going to his right hand. I mean. The guy was impressive. We he was very we impressive. You and know, I can't take that away. And so, I said on this show, right after that Chicago race, I could tell he was going to win on that next to last restart because right. he just looked so comfortable in that car. Yeah. And I mean, the footwork is impeccable. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. nobody, nobody else out there on that track does that. No. So I think um, and, he's got a bright future no matter where he's at. Oh, yeah. But I'd be interested to see see him come into into the monster energy cup yeah i would love to see how he's going to fare at daytona how would he fare at bristol you know bristol the night race or the dirt race martinsville yeah any of these any of these ovals let's see what he can do out there yeah because that's just a whole different don't just sign up for the road courses yeah it's a whole different discipline you know if you want to talk and I don't know. He might not be talking no shit. It might just be the people around him talking shit. But don't you start talking shit after you win one race, bud. Because yeah, it's a long season. Yeah. And you got people like you know, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain, Denny Hamlin. Going to make your life hell. Yeah. Just say, hey, welcome to the big time, bud. 
Joel Gano and Brad Keselowski are two of the best at that. Yeah. Making your life making hell. Making your life hell. <laughs> and you can't even tell that they're making your life hell unless you're in the car. <laughs> Ryan Newman. Ryan oh, yeah. Newman. I mean, he's out there every week now, mm -hmm. you know, and that guy can make you want to just quit your job. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Ryan Newman's a badass. smile on his yeah, face. <laughs> Ryan Newman's a badass, and he'll, he'll make you go go push carts at Walmart, you know? You right. Know? <laughs> so I think it's going to be very interesting, that Indy road course. I think um, as far as fantasy goes, I think there's going to be a lot of people picking SVG. Um, I am not one of them, but hey. I'm good with that. If, if everybody wants to pick him, that's fine. You already got your pick for Landy GP? I'm between one of two people. Yes. All right. You're in a sandwich. Yes. Yeah. I, I've got a Chevy and a, and a Toyota that I'm leaning towards. Wow. And uh, I don't know which one that's. I that's, that's still a few weeks out. I haven't looked that far ahead. Well, I think I've got... I, I'm still... I've got 30 minutes to make my Pocono pick. <laughs> right. yeah, <laughs> that's where I'm at right now. I've, I've pretty much got my Richmond pick, my Michigan pick... Those are done, I think. I may be good to go until these playoffs start, except for Pocono. I've got my Michigan pick, which is after Richmond, but I don't have my Richmond pick. Richmond's tough, man. There's a handful that could do that. Yeah. You know, it's short track. It's chaos. I love Richmond. Oh yeah. So. We'll see what yeah, it's, it's, it could get crazy. I don't know. But it's going to be definitely be interesting at Indy to see SVG and Brody out there. Um, see what they can do with, with these NASCAR guys. And especially these NASCAR guys now that know what SVG is capable of. Before, he was like, holy crap, where'd this guy come from? Yeah, now the, they know. These ringers always finish in the back. You yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how he can handle turn one at Indy. Um Welcome to American Racing, you know? Yep. Let's see what you got. America. America. Um, one of the other things I was wanting to talk about was the, the weekly Chase Elliott watch. All right, and, and you can see on the big board there that I put the 14th, 15th, and 16th in points. You got Busher, who's 97 points above the cut line. Uh, Bubba Wallace, who I know H.R. Scotty's excited that he is in the he is he's 15, making the cut so he, right now. He is above the cut line, only two points above the cut line, right. but he's there. And but he if got you Michael remember, it was probably three weeks ago uh, when Eric sat in on the podcast with us. You mm -hmm. asked me, "Was Elliot going to make it?" And I, I said yes. E even if he don't get a win, I said yes. But I said it not because of Elliot's performance, but because of the people's performance that were making the cut at the time, mm -hmm. and two of them were. Suarez and Almendinger. Mm -hmm. They were above the line at that time. They're below that line now. Yes. Yes. Suarez is one point below. I mean that's a fine that's a fine line right there. You got McDowell who's one point above it and Suarez who's one point below it. Wallace who's two points above it. And the Dinger is twenty points below it. So and this and this Pocono race all of them guys could do very well. Busher, Wallace, McDowell, Suarez. Even Almadinger could do it, or at least make up enough ground to put themselves above the cut line for now. You know, so one, two, three, four, five. So we got six races left, counting Pocono. I still see Wallace falling out, I and mean, I still see Elliott going in, even without a win, mm -hmm. just because of the tracks we got coming up. Well, I'm I'm kind of on the other side of the fence with that. I don't see Elliott getting in just on points. He's got to win at this point because he's 60 points out of the cut line. 60 points. Just a couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, he was, what, 55 out? So he's losing ground. Right, but if Wallace and McDowell take hard hits mm -hmm. and Elliott performs well, he's in. But let's look at some of these tracks. Let's let's look at Wallace and McDowell. Okay, they're the two that's right above the cut line. We've got Michigan. That's a super speedway. I think both of them two drivers could do very good at that. I mean, I, I think Elliott's gonna win that race. You think Elliott's gonna win at Michigan? Yep. You think so? Absolutely. 
I just said it. I had my driver <laughs> picked for Michigan already. Well, you did. You did. Um, I've got my driver picked for Michigan. It's but, not Chase Elliott. But he, right behind Michigan, you got the Indy Road course and Wat, Watkins Glen. Chase Elliott could win either he could one of win, those. But he could win either one of them. But Watkins but, Glen is also McDowell's favorite track. Right, and that's why I didn't I say McDowell he's... would fall out. I said Wallace will fall out. But let's LA look at Wallace. You've got, I think, I think Wallace is going to do the good. I, he's going to do decent this week at Pocono. It's a fast track, long straightaways. Toyota no. speed. They've got speed. I think he won't be in the top fifteen. You may be right. You may. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right. You may not be right. I think he's going to do decent. What decent is, I don't know. I think decent is going to be right around that. 10th I don't think place. he'll finish. 10th place you don't think he's gonna fit no you're gonna make scotty cry you well i know like this. but i mean you can't when we come to, when we come to the sport we love so much we can't hold any punches no i'm not holding any punches you back. know so i mean it's I, I, think, I know he's i know when he listens to this he's gonna be pissed at me for saying that but it just is what it is you know well it's gonna be nice for him to be pissed at you for one week instead of me because i tell you what he, <laughs> He gets mad at me every week, but uh, matter of fact, I got to answer his text back because he he just yelled at me just a minute ago because I said something about him taking Bubba at Pocono. But I think I think Bubba's going to do decent. That might be around a top ten, right around that tenth mark. It could be eighth through twelfth. You know what I mean? But I don't see Bubba doing anything at Richmond. He he's going to do pretty good at Michigan. I think he's going to do pretty good at Daytona because those are his kind of tracks. Indy and Watkins Glen. But Daytona. Daytona's a toss-up. We all know that. In, in Daytona where the chase begins? No, that's the last race that's before. That's the last race? Yes. Okay. That's so the, Darlington, I think. Might Darlington's be. where we start. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and McDowell. Same with McDowell. I see him doing decent at Pocono. Pretty good at Michigan. I see him doing pretty good at Indy and Watkins Glen and probably Daytona. I mean, I think... With all the races coming up before we get to the playoffs, I think Richmond is going to be the only one that McDowell might struggle with. Um, as far as you know, some of the people above Elliott, you know, we got Suarez. He's going to do. He's going to do fairly good. McDowell's going to lose ground at Pocono and Richmond. He'll make a little ground back at Michigan. He'll do good at Indy. He'll do good at Watkins Glen, and he'll do good at Daytona. That's why I think he'll stay in. Wallace will fall out. Buster will stay in. Mm-hmm. Buster's ha- having a Suarez good... Suarez getting in? Yep. What about the dinger? No, I don't know about Suarez. Well, if Suarez will before dinger does. What about Bowman? Bowman could be a... He could be a player in this, too. Uh, I'm gonna I mean, look to see where he's at. I don't B- know exactly Bowman, where he's Bowman, at. Bowman, right I think his best chance for a win is at Michigan. Them Hendrick cars are gonna be tough at Michigan. Yeah, you know. That's I don't have a Hendrick car as my winner at Michigan. You don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm banking on Justin being wrong. <laughs> But I've had my I've had my pick scheduled I mean, it's for happened, Michigan it's happened for a long before. time. I mean, what, you I've being been, wrong? I've been wrong once. No, once? Twice. 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 When was the last time you was wrong? I can't really put a number of years on that without saying too much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> last time I was wrong was September fifteenth, nineteen eighty six. Really? Yeah. I can remember the date, but I don't remember why I was wrong. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not too sure I was actually wrong. I might have just been mistaken. You know, I mean, that happens. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm trying to pull up the points here. Let's see. Lisa would probably disagree if she if she was sitting here right now. As far as when you was wrong? You're right. Yeah. Well. But there's there's a fine line between being wrong and not being exactly right. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, let's see. Standings here. I'm going to see where... I just want to see where Bowman is in the points. Um, Bowman is only 20th. So we got Dinger's 18th. 
And then right behind Almondinger, we've got Ty Gibbs, Alex Bowman, Justin Haley, Austin Sendrick, then Chase Elliott. And yep. Chase Elliott is sitting 23rd spot, 60 points behind the cutoff yep. line. And part of that's for his... And and part of that's for his penalty, you know. I mean, what, right? And that's what I wanted to talk about with, with uh, what due to performance, all to say. It I was, don't see Elliot getting in, and I believe I have to put this all on him. Yeah, it's all on him. Um, I think Big Rick is going to have to sit him down at the end of the year. And put a little fear into him, just like he did with oh, uh, Justin Marks earlier this year. Have a discussion with him about the good and the bad and what he's going to do gonna moving take his forward. Job, you going to take his job serious or not? Yes. Because there's a ton of people out there that will be more than happy to sit in that ride. But at the same time, you know, Big big Papa Rick ain't going to kick the most popular driver out of the seat. No. Yeah, you know, that sells a lot of merchandise. Who, you know? Who's going to... Who's got the upper hand there? I mean, Rick Big does. Rick. Rick does from a power standpoint. Yeah. But because I mean if you're put yourself in Chase Elliott's shoes. Chase if Big Elliott. Rick comes to you and sits you down and it's just you and Rick in this room, right? And he's telling you what you're going to do moving forward to make the team better. You're going to have to listen because what's your other options? Say, I do I'm going to do what I want, Rick. So Rick boots you out of that ride, where are you going to go? Yeah, I mean, you've got options, but are they the caliber of Rick Hendrick Racing? No. You know? You're going to tell me that... I mean, there's an open seat at Colleague there's now. There's going to be an open seat at Stuart Haas, too. Yeah. But are either one of those two teams Rick Hendrick? Yeah, Stuart no. Haas. No. Yeah, absolutely. Come on Not now. Not this season, but last season, absolutely. Even if Fords do a complete 180, you think Stuart Haas is going to be a better team next year than Rick Hendrick? Absolutely. You're smoking crack. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I'm saying it right to your face. <laughs> right to my face. Huh? I don't I just I just don't see it. So I think I think Elliot and and I don't think it'll don't get me come wrong. to that. No, it won't come to that. I'm just I'm just looking, you know, way outside the box here. But looking at Chase Elliott's year, you know, he brought this I'm glad that he can do it's what he not, wants as not, far as the snowboarding and extracurricular activities. I'm glad that they can do that. I'm gonna here's here's what I'm gonna say about that is we know the caliber of driver that Chase Elliott is. Okay? Yeah, he's pretty good. He's not bad. Yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad. But he's all right. look what Kyle Busch did going from Joe Gibbs to Richard Childress Racing. Yeah. Richard Childress Racing had Austin Dillon and it was... Tyler Reddick, and you could count on them for <clears throat> one, maybe two wins a year out of 36 races. Mm -hmm. Kyle Busch comes in from Joe Gibbs Racing and says, "Watch right, this, yeah, hold my beer, yeah." And has already halfway through the season won three races. Mm -hmm. You don't think Chase Elliott's going to go to Stuart Haas or Penske or something like that and and immediately turn heads? Absolutely would. He's not Kyle Busch level yet. I just don't think he can. Hmm. It's, that's another fine line. There we go. <laughs> because I don't think he's, <clears throat> talent-wise, he's not Larson or Bush. But here, here's what would hurt that situation. Like if that, that's a. Uh, but let's also look that's at a hypothetical. Right, situation. it's a hypothetical because you got to look at that as if what I'm, if what if, if he never got in a Hendrick ride to begin with? If, what if he started in a Stewart Haas if, ride? If I'm if I'm Tony Stewart and. I just found out that Rick Hendricks sat down with Chase Elliott and said, here's what you need to do. If you're going to take this job serious, here's what you're going to have to do. And Chase Elliott said, nope, I'm out. If I'm Tony Stewart, that that would uh, raise a lot of red flags to me because I'm the team owner. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody coming into my into my." Uh, tribe into my team yeah telling me what they're gonna do right you know what i'm saying so you can't have the inmates running the asylum no it don't work not. out right so hypothetically i would i would handle it like that like so is this true is this what happened with you and rick mm -hmm. yeah sorry bud i ain't got a seat for you yeah 
you know, because this is my show. Yes. I need my guys to listen to me. They can voice their opinions and I'll listen, but it's my show. Yeah. You're right. You're right with that. I don't, that's why I think if, if it was to come to that, Chase Elliott would have to abide by what Big Papa Rick well, has and to I say. Well, I think Awesome Bill would tell him the same thing. Yeah. Shut the fuck up and listen <laughs> yeah, to Rick. Shut up and drive that car. You ain't right. going snowboarding until you retire. Right. You know, and, and, but I don't, with Elliott's <clears throat> position, and I know I'm going to piss off a lot of Chase Elliott fans, and I'm fine with that, but I put it all on Chase. You know, he's the one that wanted to go snowboarding, which, like I said, I'm glad he gets to do that. But you caused it this was issue. your fault, not it was, his. Right, it was your fault that you put yourself in a position to have that accident. You know, um, the accountability is only on you. And it seems like after he came back, he just does not have a hair on fire type of urgency you know that he needs to have to um get himself back in a routine is this leg causing him more problems than what he's telling him could it could you know and then you know and then we've seen the frustration with him with denny at the coke 600 which cost him another race so getting into that routine has been difficult but he did it to himself so i don't feel bad for him Right. It all started with his own actions. Yes. Period. And that's why, to me, I'm I'm that type of person that I don't want to see any ill will towards anyone. But at the same time, if there's going to be bad results because of something that you've caused, well, it's it's kind of fitting that you know, you're the one that suffers from those bad results. And that's kind of the way I'm looking at Chase Elliott this year is I kind of... I don't really I care like, if he makes it in, but that's my honest opinion. Yes. Is I don't care be, if he makes it in, but I'm, I'd kind of like to see him not make it. Just just to maybe humble him a little bit. Gotcha. You Makes know, sense. He yeah. comes into the sport. He's Bill Elliott's son. He's all, He becomes the most popular driver as soon as Dale Jr. exits the sport. And now, all of a sudden, he can do no wrong, right? He's the golden child. He's the golden child. Well... Just because you're the golden child don't mean you're handed everything. Yeah. You might be in a good ride. You're going to perform. You might have a good mustache, you know, but you might have hooters on that car on sometimes, but you still have to drive that car, you know. So if you don't make it, I'm not going to be heartbroken about it no. by no means. No, you got no skin in the game. I mean, if he makes it, he makes it. If he don't, he don't. But that's what I predict. Wallace going out, LA going in. Yeah. All right. Well, so. we got six weeks to see if that's going to come true. <laughs> I think Wallace is going to fall out of it. I think his, I think the pressure is going to get to him, and he's just going to fall out. Um, I think McDowell's going to stay in there. Yeah. I think whew, Suarez. Hmm. If Chase Elliott don't win a race, then I, yes, I believe Suarez is going to make it in there. But. Uh, It'll be interesting. It'll be, yeah. With six weeks. These next six weeks are going to be very interesting. Nine weeks. Because we go to that bubble race there in the first stage of the chase, the Bristol. You and I go to that. Right. And riding the, riding the wall.com, we'll be there. Mm-hmm. So. We will be there. We'll stop have some merch. Us. Yep. Yeah, stop and, and see us. We're going to be parked in the grass lot right across from the... I don't know if it's right the actual the entrance of the track. Yeah. Well, the track's round, so you got two sides to it. Yeah. But you won't you won't miss us. Yeah, you won't miss us. Yes. We were first in the lot last year. Yeah. And we're gonna do it again this year. Absolutely. If you ain't first, you're last. Yep. You know, yeah. Wise man wants to get the get the best get the best parking spots close to the porta potties yep. and the racetrack. Yep. Every year. Yep. So you want to throw some cornhole or you wanna talk some shit? Come on down. We'll Come listen. Yeah, that's right. We'll be there. <laughs> we'll listen to you talk shit. We'll talk some back. <laughs> and uh, We're good at both of those. Yeah, we're very good at both of them. We're going to have some shirts. We're going to have some koozies there. Um, my uh, maker of the merch was wanting me to put out something this week about, you know, um, getting online and and 
putting a comment out there on ridingthewall.com and getting registered to win some merch for free, you know, koozies, shirts, whatever. I don't think I'm going to do that yet this week. I'm going to do that next week. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to do that next week. That way we can get some pictures up online on ridingthewall.com, maybe some Twitter, some Instagram and all that, and kind of kind of get that boat rolling first before we before we actually yeah. throw that announcement build, out build there. Build the but hype. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But um, so we're going to do that next week. Be prepared for that. Be listening for that. Be ready to win you some merch. Um, I'm looking at the big board. Got Chevy still 112. Toyota's Toyota just they're trying. They're staying in the game. They've won six. Yeah. Ford still at number two. Are they gonna win? How many? Let's ask this question. How many races is Ford gonna win this year? At six. the end of the chase. Six. You think? Yeah. That's possible. They'll it's have possible. six wins at the end of the year. I like to see more, but it'll be six. It'll be interesting to see if you're right on that one. I'm gonna have to write that one down. I'm gonna give them. I'm gonna give them four. I think they're only gonna win a couple more. They're not going to do a whole lot. Well, we'll see. That's all we can do, right? So, yeah. I'm going to write that on the board <laughs> so that way we got it for the rest of the year. Justin, six total. Yep. Chad, four total. Um, so what else you got? Anything? Anything from last week, next week? I don't. I don't. I think we covered everything we wanted yeah, to cover. Yeah, we've covered the news. We've covered... Never, there was no penalties. No? No penalties. No, no big drama coming out. Martin Truex just... Wiped the floor and yeah, said, "Ran away with it." Give me the lobster, boys. Yeah. Got dinner now. So let's go into this fantasy stuff. I'm going to say first off, I have to say first off that I finally picked a winner. Yeah, you, you know, did. I picked Truex last week, and he came through for me. And there's only two people that picked a winner this week. Yeah, you and that was HR. me and HR Scotty. Yeah, and that I think it pissed him off. <laughs> that I picked a winner. Well, I mean, I, I knew he wasn't going to stray, stray too far away from Toyota, being a Bubba fan. Right. You know, but I was surprised that you picked him, and it worked out great for both of you. Well, it was my first time picking him. He was he was my third choice, yeah. you know. Uh, my first choice was Christopher Bell. I'm glad I didn't do that, because uh, I would have just, I would have still been cussing by, you know, Thursday here. Uh, my second choice was Kozlowski. I'm glad I didn't do that either because half the, half the people in this league picked Kozlowski. So he had a top five. Uh, yeah, impressive. Yeah. And for fantasy reasons, I'm watching the highlights, and it's pissing me off that every restart he just keeps bumping a couple people out of the way. I'm thinking, my God, i gotta I got to gain some ground on these people. You know, quit doing that, Brad. But, uh, but no, he had a pretty good race. So Truex was my third pick, and I came through with that. So I finally... Finally got me a winner. Um, but we've had some movers in this league. I mean, Mama Lou still sitting at third. She she didn't go up or down. She's just no, hanging in there. She's, she's hanging out. She's creeping closer to the top. She's just gonna silently pass them two boys. So I mean, I mean, the biggest movers were. I mean, you went up four <clears throat> spots. You was the biggest mover in the positive side. Mm -hmm. Sam went down five spots in the negative side. He was the biggest mover on the negative side. I mean, well, so was Chris. Chris went down five spots. Yeah, also. that's true. Yeah, Louis Turd went. He, he sank to. He took a pretty hard hit this week. Yeah, little D. He fell four spots. That's but about we kind of expect. Right. You know, little D always going down. That's what them UK fans usually do. You know, <laughs> I mean. But Tony moved up a couple spots. We got. Uh, Mama Jess moved up a couple I've spots. Seen that. You know, she's she's getting frustrated. She's getting frustrated because you know a couple weeks ago she picked a winner and didn't move at all, and that really pissed her off. And I understand that. I I completely understand that. But um, I think she picked. I think she had Kozlowski. Yes, yeah, she did last week, yeah. and uh, so that top five moved her up a couple spots. Put it right there next to Brian again. You know her. The true X look alike. Right. Um, <clears throat> we got, like I said, Tony moved up a couple spots. Jason A. Earl moved up a couple. Well, I mean, you, you Scott moved up a couple. You're, you're in a real, you're in a real tight spot right now. I am. In I a mean, there's there's about six people around you, 
up and down. Yeah. That you guys are within 12, 15 points of each other. One good race, I can move up quite a bit. One bad race, I could fall really far. Exactly. Hand me a parachute, because here yeah. I go, boys. <laughs> and I'm nervous. That Poking that, makes that me will. nervous. Yeah, it will. And it is 6.55. I've got five minutes to get my pick in. I'm just going to expect you to give it to me vocally. Oh, I will. I area. will. Um, I'm, I'm still going back and forth. And I'm going to tell you my thinking. This is for fantasy purposes only. Because before we got on the air, I told you my, my top two drivers to pick for this week was Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. And I've already used both of those drivers once. So if I use them here at Pocono, that's going to burn them out. I won't have them for the chase. And I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not comfortable with picking Kyle Busch right now because I definitely want him for the chase. So let me ask you this. Is there any studs you haven't even picked once yet? <clears throat> like me, I haven't used Harvick, yes. and I haven't used Chase Elliott yet. Not even once. Well... Yes, there is, and that is Tyler Reddick, and that is who I think I'm going to pick for Pocono, because I think the Toyotas are going to be fast. I haven't picked him yet, so I will still have him for the... Have you used Ty Gibbs yet? No, I have not, nor am I ready to do that at Pocono. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think he's going to be a sleeper. I think for Pocono? I do. He could be. He's in a I Toyota. Do. I think they're all going to be fast. It's I, just a matter of how do they sort out. I think Ty Gibbs would be top eight. You think so? So right now, mentally, with four minutes left to pick my to make my pick, and you're going to have to help me keep an eye on that clock so I, I don't get you. my pick in late. But Yeah, because if, if it hits 7.01, you get auto-drawn. Yeah. Kyle Busch is, <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Busch is who I want to pick, but that would burn him, so I'm not going to. Denny Hamlin is my second pick, but that would burn him also. I'm a little bit better with that because I don't really see any any tracks in the in the chase that I have to use Denny Hamlin at. But I've got my spot for Denny Hamlin, so I'm not going to use him. And I'm I'm just looking at, you know, past races today and there was a handful of people that that could do pretty good. You know, Bowman, I haven't used Bowman yet. He He's in the top ten there, you know. Um, McDowell, Suarez, they need to do something pretty good because they're on that, that, that cut line. But the sandwich that I'm in as far as points, i got to make a good selection here. So I'm, I'm, I'm puckered up. I yeah. am. Yeah. So I've got three minutes. I'd say less than that. And H.R. Scott, he's already told me he's made his pick. Yeah, and he, he said, I better not pick the same driver as he him has. again. He is very vocal about I th- that. I think Chase Elliott's going to be a a contender. He could be. I mean, he won the last race via DQ from the top two. Right. You know, but... Um, well, I mean, I'm just I, not ready to pick I, Chase I, Elliott I, yet. I feel like Chase is feeling the pressure. I feel like he's he's one of them guys that can handle the pressure pretty good. You know what I'm saying? He's a clutch guy. I, I, that's why I feel like. Well, clutch could be Watkins Glen. That's know, not clutch. That's just daily to Chase Elliott. I mean, that's he could that, win, oh, he could win that race on a Wednesday night at midnight. Unless SVG <laughs> is in there, you know, SVG might come back for Watkins Glen. Good. He could. You know, I, I don't know. Six fifty-eight, according to the big clock. Yeah, you know, oh my two gosh! Has uh, you can take an has, auto draw if you want. I don't know. No, <laughs> I don't think. I, let me see. Truex is winning the points right now. No, I think I'm going to save him. I've burned Byron. He's second in the points. And Kyle Busch is third in the points, which he's my he's my top pick. And Denny Hamlin's fourth. That's my second pick. So I think my pick is going to come from the 13th. You going with Tyler Reddick? Six fifty nine. I'm going to have to go with Tyler Reddick. I'm gonna... Lock it in, huh? 
Lock it in. Because I was debating on Bowman. Because I haven't picked Bowman yet. I haven't picked Reddick either. It's a either. Chevy track. It is a Chevy track, and Bowman does fairly oh. well. I just... I'm locking in Tyler Reddick. I'm All locking right. it in. Gosh. It's a 659. Chad Damn. locks it in. Whew. Clock just a big clock just turned seven o'clock. So well, I, I, mean, I give people till seven oh one. Has Earl made his pick yet? He's he's the one that I know. Yes, he did. Oh, oh I, Earl beat me this week. Well, he, he just sent it. Just it now? says now. I don't even say one <laughs> minute ago. It says now. <laughs> well, let's let's decide who Earl picked. So that way we can see if that was an Earl or a Sonya pick. Who do you think he took? Let me ask you that. Brad Kozlowski, because he yeah, told me he was going to pick Kozlowski. He nailed it. He did. Did he? Okay. He said he's going to take the East Coast swing. He was he was high on Kozlowski. You want to go ahead and write him down? Yeah, I'll go ahead and write him down. Let's see. I'm going to... Let's see. Let's put him in blue. So okay. you guys are going to hear the points pick live on the air here. Yep. Who you got? Earl, number six. That's an Earl pick. Yeah, he burned him so because he used him last week too. So Donovan, little D, number mm-hmm. nineteen. Hmm. Jerry, number twelve. That's a good pick. Yep. Yeah. Paul. I heard Paul sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put that in there every chance I get. <laughs> That's what I've heard too. I mean, it's been a minute since I've seen him, but I mean, Paul's a good old boy. But yeah, he. Uh, now is Paul one of the truck stop guys? Yeah, he that's is. what I thought. He's, he's the. Uh, now it's Paul Riggs and Tony, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. But Paul is the, he's the head guy there. Okay. <laughs> the head guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Uh, Keep doing good work, Paul. <laughs> Paul. Paul takes Eric Jones. That is normally who I take at Pocono. So, let's see. Nobody in there. Uh, Chris Lewis. That's one you're going to be interested in. I'm two points behind Chris. Let's yep. see what he's got. 99. Got you beat, Chris. I got you beat. Sam. 43. Did Scott take the 23? No, he's saving it. Hmm. Last two races of the year, probably. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Jason A. Number nine. Number nine. It's a good pick. I'm going to pass you, Jason A. Riggs. 45. Ah, well, he ain't passing me. Nope. Riggs is only one point behind me, so. Jeff. Mm Mm-hmm. 48. Not a bad pick either. It's not a bad pick. He needs to do something. Bowman I'm talking about, not Jeff C. Well, Jeff C. does too, but. Brian. 45. Okay, okay. Joe. Number nine. Oh, the leader picks Elliot. Yes. He is 14 points ahead of Josh. Let's see who Josh picked when we get to that. Tyler. Number five. Tyler's had a bad year. Yeah, he has. Jeremy. Number eight. It's a good pick. It's a very damn good pick. He probably just picked the winner. Mofat. Oh, Mofat. Number ten. I don't know about that. Mama Jess. Uh Oh, here we go. This is interesting. Number nine. I like that pick. I think Mama's on to it. She went with the mustache, didn't she? The old 70s porn stash. Josh. Oh, here we go. Number 11. That's a damn good pick. You already got mine run down too, right? 
Yep. I took number 11 as well. Mom, number nine. There's a lot of people high on Chase Elliott this I'm week, huh? Shannon. Okay. Number six. Hmm. Okay. Tony. One of the other truck stop warriors. 48. Now, where is Tony on the ladder of truck stop warriors? Paul is the head guy. Right. Is Tony the is Tony the bottom bitch or is Tony the middle? Tony's the middle. Okay. Yeah. Paul runs that show. So Paul's the big spoon. Right. And Paul, Riggs is Paul the Paul is spoon. the head guy at the Bardstown Truck Stop. Gotcha. Tony is his right hand man. And Josh is kinda Josh is hit and miss. I thought it was Riggs. Yeah. No, oh Riggs. Okay. Yeah. Riggs, Tony, and Josh. Well, All right. But Riggs' name is Josh. Oh. Josh Riggs. So then who's Riggs? Josh Riggs. That's a different... Oh, that's a different Josh. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> that's why I did one. I thought it was the same person. <laughs> okay, never mind. I'm, I'm straight now. <laughs> and Riggs is kind of hit and miss at the truck stop. He calls in a you lot. You got to make an appointment? No, he calls in a lot, but he, he don't take it as serious as the head guy and the right-hand man. Gotcha. They, they really take their job serious. Gotcha. Hunter. Oh, this is the one I'm waiting on. Hunter needs to rebound. He's one point He's one point ahead of H.R. Scotty. Yeah. Who do you think he took? Hunter? What do you think he did? I mean, he's fallen. Yeah, he's he is nowhere he, near his normal. You think he went with an absolute rescue here? Or you think he playing it safe? I think he probably went with somebody like a Chris Bush or something. Close. Really? Number six. Six. That's not a bad pick. Jason. Maybe. H. Okay. Number five. That's a couple Larsons now. That is all I have. Scott. HR? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got Scott's. I've just opened his message before now. Now, if he picked, he better not have picked the 45 car. No, he didn't. Okay. He picked 23. You want me to write that down? No. 23? No, no, I told okay. you, he's, he's going to save him for the last two right, races. That's of the trying. Year. That's trying. Number six. Well, he ain't going to pass Hunter. Well. So, you've got a bunch of sixes right around you. Yeah, dude. So we don't have Joey or Mike at the bottom there. No, no, no. Joey did turn one in. Hang on. Okay. I may have opened it on accident. <clears throat> I don't open these messages just for this reason. So, number 17. He, sent yeah, he took the busher. Yep. He sent it at 2.12 p.m. today. So, it's just my car. Well... Do we go ahead and see who he gets on the auto draw? <laughs> it's 7.08 right now, so I've got the points pulled up. If you want to pull up the to see who he's picked and who he hasn't. I can try. My uh, internet don't work as fast here, but we'll try it and see what, see what we can get out of it. Because I'm pretty sure he's already burned the top 10. <laughs> Could be top 10. <laughs> Let's see. Truex, Byron, Bush, Hamlin, Larson is the top five. Yeah, I'm still trying to... Or you can pull up the points and I'll pull up the who he's picked, whichever way you want to go with it. I... Sure, it's just my internet. It's not... So it's Riggs not ain't going to pass me. I just need, for me, fantasy reasons, I need to hope that Blaney has a bad day because he's only one Jerry picked Blaney he's only one point behind me yeah I need that Chase Elliott and that uh, Brad Kozlowski and Daniel Suarez to have a not so good race they need to finish like 12th 15th and I need uh, the old red dick to win this thing yeah well I mean I, I think well I mean I'd like to see Hamlin get a win. 
I'm sure you I'm would. burning him. I'm burning him this time. So uh, he didn't do bad. He kind of lost some ground there at the end of the race last week, but uh, I'm rolling. I'm I'm putting a lot of uh, a lot of faith in Hamlin this weekend. That's my. I'm gonna not saying it out loud because I don't want anybody in a fantasy to know, but. I'm just going to show you. Those are my next three picks for the well, next three Well, I had tracks. the similar. I had the same one saved for Richmond, but I'm going ahead and <clears throat> play in a different way. Right. Well, Michigan, I, I I said a long time ago that that's where I'm 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 burning Harvick at Michigan. So HR, I just want you to know, you blame me for picking the same driver as you. I'm telling you right now, I'm picking Kevin Harvick at Michigan. Don't do it. Okay, so who's the points leader? Uh, we uh, Truex. Okay, so he's my car has burnt him. I've seen that coming. Who's number two? Byron. Uh, Byron is number two. He's burnt him. Kyle Busch. Burn him. Oh, hell. Denny Hamlin. Give him Denny Hamlin. This will burn him. Oh. Okay. Well, let's write her down here. Mike R. has the 11. I don't... <laughs> Don't give me any. That doesn't. I don't <laughs> comb the butterflies any. No. Because <laughs> for those of you listening and uh, have kept up with this fantasy league that we're in, um, Mike R has been auto drawn most of the year. I don't know how many weeks, yeah. but he's been most of the year. He's been auto drawn, and when you're auto drawn, you take the points leader. Yeah. You know, you got you got to burn available. him. You can't select. Highest one available. Yes, highest yeah. one available. I'm sorry. And. Mike R has done that for most of the year, and normally that would be bode pretty good for you, you know, if if you're but taking. The, but the reason we do that is because because when the chase comes, you don't have any good drivers left, right? And you sink. So yeah. that's kind of the philosophy behind that. And Mike R is at the basement. He is twenty <laughs> sixth out of twenty six, and he's damn near fifty points behind 25th place so he yeah. is just he's over the 400 mark it, yeah he's the only 400 guy we've got so um which brian but, will be the next 300 point guy we got think so yeah oh, oh yeah oh yeah he's yeah. he's at 299 he's hanging on by a thread and i don't uh yeah. well, well he picked my guy so he probably will be the next 300 guy <laughs> he could be <laughs> <laughs> he could be just hope he ain't the next 330 guy yeah <laughs> that's what you better hope for yeah <laughs> hope not <laughs> but it'll be interesting um pocono's a good a good track for this situation that we're in with the fantasy league shuffling things up a little bit yeah well i finally was able to move up more than one or two spots so i moved up four last week I'm hoping I'd be happy if I just move up one or two. If I move up one or two spots every week, I'm good with that. Right. You know? I just I, I just need to stay in the top ten. That's all I'm really concerned about is all the way up until the chase. Mm-hmm. I want to stay in the top ten. Did you know? Scotty give you a hard time about passing you last week? No. No. I thought he for texted sure. me and told me. Oh, did he? I already knew, yeah. but <laughs> he had to make sure I knew. Well, he better stay in front of me. That's all I gotta say because I'll get him. I'll pass him back this week. Yeah, very well. Could you've got Hamlin? He's got Keselowski, and there's only three points yeah. separate you. Yeah, I'll pass him back. I might need one good race from my guy and one bad race from his guy to pass him in one week. It might take me a couple of weeks to get by him if we do decent. You know, both of us do decent, but. I don't know. I was right there on his ass 
just a few weeks ago. And then I don't even remember what happened, but he pulled away from me. So if, if I pass Scotty, and Scotty, I'm talking straight to you right now. Right to your face. Right to your face. Don't let me pass you, because I will tell you about it every day for that whole week or until you pass me back. And I don't... I he don't... would do the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's been in front of me so long, I think he's just kind of burned out on making fun of me right now. So. <laughs> but he's only one point ahead. Of, he's only one point behind Hunter, and I know that he's been looking to pass Hunter for a while. But yeah. he's not going to do it this week since they both got the same guy. So that may have I think to happen. I'll pass it, both of them. It could happen. It could happen. With with Mama Lou taking Chase Elliott though, her and the leader might, both. It's a good pick. I'm telling you, it could be. It could be. I'm telling you. And I, I don't could, look I, for Mama Lou to drop any. And I, I could that. I could show you the message where I said I'm picking between three drivers to somebody in the league. Yeah. And it was Byron, Elliott, and Hamlin. And I went with Hamlin. So you went with your third choice? Uh, or was that in any order? Yeah, any order. I got gotcha. you. Well, Hamlin and Bush were my top two. So my third choice worked for me last week. Hopefully my third choice works for me this week. We'll see what happens. Yeah, roll the dice. That's what this game is. That's what it is. And this game got real hard when they brought in that new car. Yeah. Because this was kind of easy. <laughs> well, it wasn't easy, but it was easier <laughs> before this new car. A little car. bit more predictable. Yeah. Now it's like just you throw darts at the wall or pick a name out of a hat and hope for the best. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, that's about all I've got for this week. You got anything else to add to this show? I don't. All I can say is live uh, life. Enjoy your racing and yeah, keep on keeping on. Yeah, wise man once <laughs> said that. I know that. Uh, I'm going to the races tomorrow. Tomorrow here at the local track. I-65 uh, Speedway. Yeah, we'll see. It's a Friday night. They normally run on Wednesdays. They're getting started. So we'll see what kind of car count Friday brings. We don't know. Could be good, could be bad. I'll let you know next week. But uh, Yeah, I know you, then, and, you and Eric are going. Uh, yeah, me and Eric. Dad goes. Uh, me my and, brother. Me and Lisa are taking the kids to the Clark County Fair, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow night. Well, there you go. Good times. Yeah. Spend two hundred dollars, spin around and around. Yeah. Hope oh, you yeah. don't puke. Do you ride the rides? Nothing. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't ride too many of them at the local fairs anymore. No, no, I don't. My my back ain't what it used to be. Yeah. I think the last time I rode a big ride at a local fair was we was up at Brownstown at the Jackson County Fair, and that's for you listening. If you're not around this from around this area, that's the biggest, it's the biggest county fair. County fair in the state of Indiana. Oh, is it the yep. biggest one in the state? Yep. That don't surprise me. It is. It don't, because I mean they've got some quality rides, yeah. and you can't walk. It's so packed with people, you can't walk. But uh, last time I rode a big ride was at Brownstown. Uh, this was probably six seven years ago maybe longer than that uh, my daughter wanted me to ride that one ride that just goes in a circle it's like a roller coaster but it goes in a circle yeah i don't remember what it's called i know what you're talking about it goes both got... directions it goes yeah. both ways yeah. yeah it just goes around and around i rode that and you know riding a roller coaster that goes upside down don't really bother me but you got some speed to build up to that you know it, it this thing just kind of goes and then it stalls out at the top so you're upside down for like five seconds well that kind of freaked me out had but, time to look well, yeah i had time to look <laughs> um i had to plan i had to take my hat off i don't like to do that you know because yeah. i didn't want i didn't want to lose my hat can't do that so but that was the last time i wrote a big one and that was only because my daughter yeah. Made me do it. So, you know, I, Dad couldn't chicken out. Right. So, I had to do it. It was fun, but I, I don't know if I'd do it again. Yeah, I'm not. At my age, that scares the hell out of me. Yeah. Local fair rides are one of them things that scares the hell out of me now. Just because. The Too local, many horror stories. <laughs> the local fair women scare the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
I can uh, see that. I'm not going to say why. <laughs> I'm not going to say why. I'm not even going down that road. Yeah. But anybody <laughs> lives in to small town that. America and has a county fair, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like to people watch. Yeah. I like to do that all the time. So if I go to a mall, I'll sit down off to the side. I'll get me a drink and I'll just people watch. You yeah. know, I, I try to predict somebody's story, you know, as they come walking in and see where they're going and stuff like that. So people watching at the fair yeah, is is very fun. You can't even make that one. It's kind of like going to Walmart at 3 a.m., you know. Yeah. When you could go to Walmart at 3 a.m. You never know what's going to walk through that door, you know. But, yeah. So I'll be at, anyway, I'll be at the races tomorrow night and. I'll give you a full report next week. See if it's the same list of drivers. See if they got more. But um, for those of you out there, we're going to call it a show for this week. And uh, if you're going to the races, enjoy. Take somebody new. Uh, root for your favorite drivers. But be safe, most yeah. important. Right in the face. Yep. Yeah.